I just feel really, really thankful that my with my experience, even with LA Knight, like they've just, all of them have really put such like a positive insight on my career. And I'm just so thankful for that. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Out of Character. I'm your host, Ryan Satin, here once again to pick the brain of a WWE superstar for you so that the two of us can get to know this person better. This week on the show, we've got someone who I have recently become such a big fan of, Maxine Dupree. I think that she has been a huge addition to Alpha Academy. I think that she has been someone who has been incredibly entertaining with maximum male models. And I think that she has a very bright future ahead of her. So I was very excited to finally get her in here because honestly, if you look on the internet, there's not a ton of information about who she is as a person, the person off screen that you've never met until now. Now you get to meet Maxine Dupree in this conversation. Enjoy. Maxine Dupree, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it very much. How are you doing over there? I am great. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to chat. Yeah, we were just talking before we started and you've already had a full day over there of training. Yeah. I'm doing my best to wake up over here on the West Coast. Uh, but I'm going to start this off asking you what I ask everybody else. And that's how much of your real true self is there in the character that you play on TV? Ooh, okay. So I definitely think the, the bougie parts of it, the fashion, um, the kind of playing like the momager role, I that resonates with me. Um, the whole like, we don't eat carbs and we're really mean to everyone. That's not me. <laughs> I love I love me some pasta, some pizza. I love a balanced a balanced lifestyle. Um, love to lead with kindness and not you know judge people off of their looks and those kind of things. So that part of Maxine is definitely like a really fun area to play up because it's not me. So I really get to like act and dive into that. But I definitely don't resonate with that side of her. It's gotta be fun though for you since you do seem to be a nice person. It's gotta be fun for you to kind of like play with that a little bit and get to like, it is. get to, you know, explore those inner thoughts. Yes, yeah, yeah, it is It is fun. It's like, I definitely get to really play it up and that's cool. You mentioned Momager. Uh, do you watch the Kardashians? Oh, of course. I, I, I haven't watched last night's episode though, cause I, it came out at midnight here. I won't spoil it. My, I, I don't, I actually don't ever watch the Kardashians, but my wife does and I am interested in the Kanye West stuff. So I watched it last night for like the first time. So maybe think of that. And there's a lot of sister drama. I know, I'm excited. I love reality TV. <laughs> I, also, I also love reality TV. What, what would you say is yeah. your favorite reality show? Oh, Dance Moms, hands down. I watch <laughs> Dance Moms. I'm not joking. I watch Dance Moms top to bottom at least 25 times. <laughs> But I'm going to be honest, I actually only watch to season four now and then I just restart because as the kids get older, it like starts to make me sad because I'm like, okay, they're like, they really know what's going on. This is getting toxic. But when they're little and like, they're not really in the room for all the drama, it's good. That's so funny because I was doing research on you last night and uh, that makes sense that you like Dance Mom because yeah. you were in that whole scene from a very young yeah. age and, and did it for a long time. So it doesn't surprise me that that would be the one I that know. would resonate the most with you. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, when I was when I was doing research, it was funny. I I was trying to find stuff about you, and then yeah, I found this, and it painted a good picture of of your of your youth. I think uh, it says growing up in Northern California. It was a bio that was about you on an old website, oh. but it was growing up in Northern California and beginning dance at the age of three. Sydney has competed for nine years in dance, three years in gymnastics, and one year in cheerleading, winning several titles the face of Starbound <laughs> National Talent Competition and, I multi was. That was my claim to fame. <laughs> and multiple overalls throughout her time as a competitive dancer. Sydney also appeared on multiple news stations in the Sacramento area as a child, in addition to landing lead roles in several productions. So you have been busy since you were a kid, it sounds like. Yes, I have. I love it. I'm like, I know, me and my mom actually talk about this a lot because she's sometimes like, I regret us not having like family dinners every night, but I loved being at the dance studio all day, all night. Like I have no regrets. I loved it so much. How long has it been since you did dance? 
Uh, since I signed, because I was dancing for the Phoenix Suns, and we ended our season um, after that NBA Finals, and I had gotten notice of my tryout, I want to say that last week of practice, I remember I had a meeting with my coach, I was like, I'm not going to come back, I'm trying out for the WWE, and now we're here. I was going to ask that if you were still cheerleading when WWE came into the picture, because yeah, it seems yeah. like it seems like it kind of just like went in order and just happened. Yeah, I honestly, I feel so blessed for how it played out. Like I had, I got, I was applying and then I got two weeks notice for the tryout, which was just enough time for me to prepare. Did the tryout, had 30 days to move and my apartment lease was up in 30 days. Oh. So it was like, everything fell into place so perfectly. So you had been pursuing WWE prior to that already? I had been applying for a tryout, yeah. What drew you to WWE considering it's so different from what you had been doing before? Well, I love reality TV and I was obsessed with Total Divas. Really? So it was Total Divas? Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, love hearing that. It. Yes. And I was obsessed. Like I've seen every episode multiple times, loved it. And I literally, I used to sit my friends down and be like, you guys, you got to watch this. This is what I'm going to do. This is my next step. Everyone prepare, get on board. And all of them are like, don't know what this is, but you got it. <laughs> Dude, that's so cool to hear that Total Divas was your entryway into WWE because so many yeah. people, I've been like the biggest Bella Twins fan forever. I, oh, I'm have, in love with them. I, have, I have sung their praises for so long and how, the, you know, the show that they helped get on TV really did bring in a whole new female audience. And you it know, did. when I was a writer, or excuse me, when I had my own website, I had multiple writers that were female that started and they all told me the same thing. It was Total Divas that yeah. got me into it. Uh, so it's it's really cool to hear that the, that someone like you who is killing it on TV now got into the business because of Total Divas. Yeah, it's crazy because even now I have friends that didn't grow up watching WWE and they'll be like, wait, what is it? And I'll be like, you know, the, the twins on Total Divas? Like, that's what it is. And they're like, oh my gosh. And that's truly how so much of, I think, women in my generation resonate with it. And so I, I think it was so special and it really made that whole generation really go mainstream. God, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Who was your... Who did you gravitate towards the most on Total Divas? Nikki Bella. Nice, nice. Yeah. I, think I still, I'm like, pop off. I love watching their businesses, their wine. I love this new transition they're going through. I just think they're such strong, powerful, beautiful, intelligent women. And I just love how they use their platform. And they're so honest. Like, they're very good at being raw on social media. And I think that's very difficult to do. Dude, it's very difficult to do. And they really do a good job of, like, staying above it and not like falling into the trap of like reacting to what everyone would say about yeah. them and really just living their lives, accomplishing the things that they want to accomplish and just, you know, being the superstars they are. Absolutely. You know, it's funny. That means technically, technically you're in the business because my, my dad did help bring the Bella twins to TV. Like he, my dad went back, back, back in the day, he gave them their yeah. first reality show job. Uh, on a show called Meet My Folks. And so technically, he gave them their start. Technically. So <laughs> I love that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Keep it in the family. So you also, okay, wait. Actually, I got a little ahead of myself. So I talked about your real true self, but I want to know, since there is differences between the two, how would you describe your off-screen personality? Off-screen? Yeah. Oh, I am like, I'm very goofy, I love an excursion of any kind. Like I love, like I was in Sarasota this past week and we went to Sarasota Jungle Gardens. I got to play with all the animals and like, I just love that. Um, I would say I'm pretty type A and structured still. That's for sure, I love a plan. Um, but yeah, I would just say I'm a lot goofier than you see on screen or even that you see on my social media, to be honest. Yeah, I feel like on your social media, you're much more your businessy on your social media. I am. You, yes. You got that fashion line. You got to make sure you're staying. Yes. You got to show off the fashion and that's mainly your focus you on that. Yes. And makeup, fashion and makeup, I feel like are the two things. Yeah. Yeah. Which I do. I, I love both of those things so much. Yeah. And it's funny too, because in, in doing my research, when I was looking up stuff about you, uh, the makeup thing, cause I've seen your like, get ready with me things on, yeah. on TikTok. <laughs> But it's it was it was funny to me because I found a video of yours from like five years ago where oh, you're no. doing like a get ready with me. Well, you're not doing a get ready with me. It's a makeup 
thing, but it's so long ago. And I was like, wow, I, this, to all those I could tell, I, I knew it. I knew it. Cause I usually go on YouTube <laughs> and I, I, <laughs> I knew you scrubbed the internet of your videos yes. because I usually go on YouTube and I'll put the person's real name in and then I'll do upload date and try and find the oldest video on them possible. And I could tell you had a YouTube channel, but none of it is on there anymore. So it was on nope. someone else's channel who's like, hey, me and Sydney or whatever. And there's like a whole, there's a whole like get ready with us thing oh, there. Oh no, how am I gonna find that one to delete it? <laughs> <laughs> and all the comments are like, is this Maxine Dupree? Is this Maxine Dupree? Oh, no. <laughs> That's love, so funny. I, I love I'm it. impressed you found that. Yeah, well, I mean, I love doing that. Going into YouTube, putting their real yeah. name in and searching far back. And I, I'm really glad that you said you scrubbed the internet. <laughs> yeah. because I, I, I scrubbed the internet <laughs> of all my... It's not that they were bad. It's just... <laughs> I, I look back and it's just a little cringy for me because I'm just a little baby like in my bathroom and I'm like, I just feel like the world doesn't need to see these. <laughs> <laughs> see, I disagree. I think the world does need to see those types of things because I think when, you know, people who are fans of yours, they see the beginnings and where you yeah. are now. I do think that kind of stuff is inspiring. Well, I still have them. So maybe, maybe I'll be inspired to leak a few. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, uh, was going to have my producer pull the video and put it up here, but I was like, no, <laughs> I could tell she scrubbed these videos from the internet. I'll just bring oh, it up. I would die. <laughs> Uh, what inspired you to start your own fashion line? So both of my parents were entrepreneurs and um, even my mom's dad was. And so I just like, I grew up seeing that lifestyle and my parents worked so hard, like always up at the crack of dawn, working all day, coming home and still working. So I saw the hustle, but I also really saw the reward. And I'm just, I'm really grateful for everything that they were able to do and provide because they like were they were able to create this business and work so hard and they were blessed that it was successful. Um, so I always had that kind of instilled in me that I wanted to do that. So um, I, I always wanted a brand, but I didn't know what I wanted it to be. And that was like a little tricky kind of finding out like exactly how I wanted to do it, what I wanted my messaging to be and all that. So I spent a year just kind of figuring that out, looking at manufacturers, and then I, I just kind of launched it. I'm really a person of like, I think that obviously there's things that are hard and you have to go to school for or whatever, but I'm very like, if I want to do something, I just rip the bandaid off and learn as I go. I learned everything on YouTube. So I didn't go to college. So I was like calling my mom for help of like, okay, am I doing this legally correctly? Like, where do I need to register? How do I do my taxes? So all of that was a huge learning curve for me, but yeah, I just, I ripped the bandaid off and I'm still learning. I'm still making mistakes. Um, but I love it. It's so fun. I think people underestimate just how much you can find for that type of thing on the internet. Like you said, you know, you didn't yeah. go to school for it, but you watched YouTube, you know, you did your research. Like that was like me yeah. when I had my own website, like I was like, I'm going to start a website. And then I was like, Oh, I don't know how to do, I don't know how to build a website. Yeah. I don't know how yeah, to I like, my own website. Yeah, I just get on YouTube and you just, you know, you just look around enough and you can figure it out if you're, yeah. you know, if you're driven enough. Yeah. And thankfully I think that's my personality. Like I said, I'm pretty structured. So like, I'm pretty good at like, okay, here's my list of like must get done to make this work. And I will 99.9% .9 of the time figure out how I'm going to get it done. Yeah. And I think that you really like from just from an outsider perspective who doesn't know anything about fashion, uh, I feel like, you know, you, you do a really good job of utilizing social media to help Thank push you. your brand. Yeah. I love social media. I know a lot of people are indifferent about it, but I have so much fun creating content it's like truly enjoyable to me. Like I'll just like rent a studio space and bring my tripod and get all my content for the next few weeks and I'll save ideas and inspiration and make notes of what I need to film. And I like editing. So it's that to me, isn't so much of a task. Um, I have with my brand. Um, this is the first time where I've hired someone to help me with social media for my brand. And it's been amazing. I will say I'm learning how to delegate a little bit. <laughs> And that's been a, a good blessing for me in this past few months. That's difficult to do though, when, you know, you have controlled every aspect of yeah. something, you know, you're like, well, I can just do it myself. And then you're like, well, no, I should probably get help with some of these things. Yeah. yeah. Especially social media. Like when you're traveling all the time, it's gotta be hard to be sitting there editing videos when you're on the road all the for time. Sure. Especially when it's like, I'm managing two separate brands. Like I'm managing my Maxine account and then my Jaunty account, which are obviously completely different. 
And I think the Maxine account, you do a good job, well, at least on TikTok. I, I, I know on TikTok, I see, that's where I see the most of them, is yeah. you do a good job of letting people in too, of, you know, you. building yeah, a community, which is really hard to do, I think. Yeah, I try. And I honestly, that's like on my goals list to kind of transition that over to Instagram. I don't know why I'm like this. I have this idea that with TikTok, that there's just like less going on or less views or less, it's like less scary to me. So I'll post whatever, I don't care. And then on Instagram, it's like, feels a little more structured. So that is something I'm working on that I want to start to try and just share some more of those videos of just being more myself and more open on Instagram as well. I think the difference is with TikTok, I feel like the reason TikTok blew up is because for so long, Instagram was like where you flexed, where you tried to look yeah. cool, you'd show people what you were doing, but you were always yeah, trying to look cool on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And then when the pandemic started and people couldn't go out looking cool all the time, I think TikTok kind of blew up because TikTok is almost the antithesis of that, where it's like, you don't have to be all looking good. You can be sitting in a corner somewhere and just say something into the camera or get ready with me type stuff. Yeah. And I think that that's where the real difference is because on TikTok, you can kind of just be yourself. And on Instagram, you got to kind of like play up how There's cool you are. There's a little more pressure. Yeah. Yes. yes. And, and I don't know why I've, I've noticed this shift. Um, I feel like there, the past like five years has really been heavy on like, edited photos and like your feed all needs to match and look the same and that if it's cohesive you'll get more followers and now i feel like we're in this new era of like people don't want to see edited photos they want to see raw real they want to relate to you and i think that's really cool that we're transitioning into that yeah i think for the same reason instagram their algorithm is pushing that stuff because they're like well yeah. we can't let tiktok take over so we got to push that stuff too and i think it's kind of like throwing a lot of things out of whack when it comes to instagram because you're like well how am i supposed to I had an, how do I manage, I, this? How do I manage this? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's what I think about all that. We'll transition out of the influencer <laughs> talk here for a second. You mentioned, we mentioned cheerleading. We were talking about cheerleading. Yeah. Uh, so how long were you a professional cheerleader for? So five years in total. So basically I competed in dance the way competition dance works is you compete until you're 18 and then you can go to college and do a dance team or, um, dance professionally. So I competed until I was 18 and then I moved to Los Angeles because I signed with an agency when I was 16. So I was traveling there a lot, starting to work and just kind of like dip my toes in the pool of possibility in Los Angeles. And um, I actually did arena football first, which I feel like no one knows. I did I not know. For, I, I did not know that. That's awesome. Yeah. I danced for LA Kiss, which the Kiss band owned. And I was 18. So that was my first team I did, which was honestly such a great choice for me because I was still growing up and like that coach was Lindsay our director was amazing like she was literally like okay I had dark hair and I would wear like a dark lipstick with like just mascara and she was like we're going blonde you're doing smoky eye nude lip like she like snapped me into shape so that was a great learning experience for me and then I went on to do the Los Angeles Rams for two years and then after the Rams I went to the NBA and danced for the Phoenix Suns for two years and then you made it your teams made it to the Super Bowl and the NBA Finals, right? Yeah. What was yes. that like cheering there? Oh, it was so – Super Bowl was like – I can't even explain it. It was such an eye-opening, like, life-changing experience for me. It was so special. Um, we all got two tickets. So, like, my mom came. My cousin came. It was just, like, such an exciting experience and actually very similar to WrestleMania. Like, you go to the hotel. There was – we had a welcome party – for like the cheerleaders and their families and the players and their families. And oftentimes the cheerleaders are not um, getting those same benefits that the players are, but at Super Bowl, they really took such good care of us. And then you're up at 5 a.m. all week doing media and news. And then dancing in the game was just like, it's just such a pinch me moment. It was so special. Who, who was like the halftime performer that year? Oh, that's a great question. Um, that's where ooh. my mind always grabs. I'm not a big sports guy, so that's where my mind always gravitates Wait, when I, I should, Super Bowl. I should know this. You know, the reason I don't is we didn't get to watch it. Oh, that was okay. our break. So we were – I actually have a selfie of me in the locker room eating a burrito at halftime of Super Bowl. <laughs> but I can't remember who it was. Is this, this is 2017? Uh, 2019. 2019, okay. Uh, Maroon, oh, that's Maroon 5. Okay, is that Atlanta? Yes. Okay, okay, Maroon 5. Not a great Super Bowl performance, so the burrito was probably better. Yeah. <laughs> I was hungry. 
What about the NBA finals? Is that is that a fun one too? It was, but it was very different because we were coming out of COVID. Um, oh, okay, so we yeah. So we're not allowed to dance on the floor. So we had like a little stage in the crowd and we were only allowed six dancers per game and we had a team of 18. So we it wasn't the same experience. Also like Super Bowl, we traveled to go to the Super Bowl and NBA finals, just home games. So you're like in Phoenix where you dance all the time. You know, it just, it didn't have that same like feeling for me, but of course it was still such an exciting thing to experience. And Phoenix like really showed up. So I'm not a big uh, sports person, but do you have any fun stories or interactions with any popular players that people watching this might know while you were cheerleading? Well, while you're cheerleading, it's against your contract to fraternize with the players. You can't talk with the players at all? No. Get Not out of here. Too. Really? Yeah. That's a crazy rule. That's a, a crazy unfair rule on both sides. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, I think the idea of it is to like try maybe try and keep it anti-drama. I don't know. It's it's an interesting rule. But and I don't know. I can't speak for currently because I don't know if that's still the situation, but yeah. That's, that's a, that, what a bummer. That's, <laughs> you'd think if you're like a cheerleader for a team, you'd be like, oh sick, I'm gonna get to like talk to the players and like be part oh. of the team. Like I couldn't imagine I if I was like here and I couldn't talk to like, I don't know, one of the other hosts, you know, I'd be like, oh, that's right? weird. I know, like, I can't say any names, but there was definitely girls that would, you know, sneak around. It was like, it was, there's like a private group chat, like so-and-so's having a get together, who's going? <laughs> So there, there definitely was things going on, but good. nothing, um, nothing that I was there for. So I have no good stories. <laughs> I was a severe rule follower, like to a fault. So you strike me <laughs> as a rule follower. follower. You, you yeah. definitely strike me as a rule follower. Just seeing like how structured your, you know, your youth was and all the things that you did yeah. growing up. I'm like, yeah, this person probably like, you know, kept it's actually funny order. because my mom hates it because my mom's the opposite. My mom is like. No, no, no. We're asking for forgiveness, not permission. And I am like, we can't cut the line. We're gonna get in trouble. And my mom is like, Sydney, just come with me. <laughs> it's hilarious. So then, okay, so you're doing, uh, you're doing the cheerleading during COVID. Then you, you were like, you know what? This is gonna be my future. So how long, how long had you been trying to get an uh, an audition with WWE or try out with so WWE? I have been like, I've been submitting since like 2020, I think. Um, and then I actually, I submitted like multiple times online. Then I ended up calling my modeling agency or I emailed her and I was like, Hey, this is so random, but like my life goals to be in WWE. If you have any connections to get me a tryout, will you let me know? And she was like, yeah, for sure. I don't know if she knew a recruiter or if she just submitted me. I have no idea. Um, but two weeks later I got an email that I had a tryout in Las Vegas. See, we, I just had Chelsea green on the show. Yeah. And I know you guys are you guys are little besties over there now. And I just yeah. I just had her on the show and we were talking about how she she texted Triple H and just be like, hey, I would like to have my job back. And he was like, cool, let's do it. And I, I I just think that it's so important just to like to reach out to people, to try and make stuff happen, like as opposed to just being like, yeah. Well, that's never gonna happen. You know, you could have easily watched yeah. Total Divas and been like, I'd like to do that one day and then just kept moving along and done nothing towards it. But the fact that you kept sending those in, it wasn't working. So you went another route and made your way in. And then you had such a quick call up really is like the, the dream right there. That's what you want. That's what you want to see people doing. Yeah. And it's crazy. Cause I have always, since I was little, my parents had me write down my goals and I still do it. Like I have a notes list in my phone that is so long of goals. I have like monthly yearly. And then I have a random list of things that just pop in my head that I'm like, I want to do that. So I have been like writing down these goals for so long. And I think like to what you're saying, if I have a goal, if I know anyone even in that realm, I'll just be like, hey, so random, just something I'm thinking about. If you ever like meet someone or think it might be a good connection, please let me know. And I just think that's so, um, it's so important to just put yourself out there, even though it can be intimidating sometimes, but such beautiful things can come of it. Yeah, I actually, when I was reading an old interview of yours, I saw that you said you're a big believer in manifesting and writing down mm -hmm. goals. Do you know, since you're on your phone, I know you can't pull it up, but do you know what's at the yeah. top of your of your goals list right now? Oh, I have lots for the year. So <laughs> this is actually funny because I wrote last year, um, prior to being called up, 
I wrote on my list to um, debut on Raw or SmackDown. I don't even know why I wrote it down because I had not debuted. I was not prepared to be like doing that. I don't even know why it like came to my head, but I was like, I'm just gonna write it down. And if I have to like not cross it off, it's okay. So I just, it's so real. Um, but I do have a lot for this year. Um, oh, I wish I could pull up my, on my phone so I could read them to you. Um, off the top of my head. Oh, okay. Random life goal. Okay. I want to be on Dancing with the Stars so bad. <laughs> Love it. Got to follow in that Nikki like, Bella footsteps. I like it. Yes. And like, I just feel like I want to like relive my little dance moment just for a second. You know, that, that would be exciting. Are the, um, aren't the people on there though? Who are the celebrities? Like, aren't they not dancers in the past, though? Um. Okay. Last year, the girl from Bachelorette, she was an NFL cheerleader. Okay. Then all they right. had JoJo Siwa, who was on Dance Mom. Okay. All right. So I think that rolls out the window. I, I think, think you're right. It. Yep. All right. You're the you're yeah. clearly the the aficionado here. I'll I'll trust you. Yes. Um. I have some like you know some wrestling work goals that I can't fully expose, but I do have a long list of those. <laughs> So, okay, I want to, okay, oh, wait, mm, I'm going on my list here. I don't want to get too out of order, but I do kind of want to know about when you got called up because, like, how yeah. long How long were you actually in NXT for? Okay, so I signed in October 21. Yes. And then I went up in July. Yes, that. but then, so how? So you were only in NXT for, like, because I only picked, remember you there very shortly. Yes, and I was only, like, on TV for, like, I don't even know a month or two. Yeah, that's okay. That that's what I remember. I wanted to make sure my memory was correct there. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I, I, I really should have done this on my laptop because on my phone I also have a note of um, WWE moments to remember. So I have like, I literally have when I like the first my tryout moments that were special when I got called up, my first time being on TV and NXT. Like all the dates are all written down. So I'll have to, we'll have to revisit that when I have my phone. But yeah, I was only there for a few months. Um, do you want me to kind of tell you the, yeah, absolutely. the story? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, um, well, this is actually interesting because I've never talked about this or posted this, but I actually, I fractured my fibula. Oh, damn. And that happened in like, oof, I'm going to say May, maybe May or June. So I think that that, in hindsight, was actually a really big blessing because I wasn't doing much in NXT because I was injured. So I think when they were looking at who was going to be Maxine, that for me ended up being a positive thing and allowed me to heal and whatnot. So I was in NXT for a little bit, um, working with Vaughn and Stone, which was amazing. It was so much fun. Um, and I obviously wasn't doing very much because Stone was managing Vaughn and I was kind of with them. So I would like get a few lines here and there, but I think it was still just like, okay, she's new. Let's just, you know, dip her toes in it. Then um, they started kind of advertising like, oh, this new character, Maxine is, you know, going to join Maxine Male Models. And I think they promoted it for like three weeks. And I didn't know that whole time. I had no idea. <laughs> and then that was, for, yeah, it gets better. <laughs> so that was for SmackDown. So then the week before they were actually in Orlando and we all went and watched and I was like, they advertised it again. And I was like, I kept like seeing like a few little tweets and I was like, mm, you know, it has to be someone that could be LA Knight's sister. And I'm like, I'm like, there's just no way. Like, I'm not ready yet. And like, I'm not healed. Like it's, there's just no way. So then, um, fast forward to the next week, which is the week that Maxine is supposed to debut. Uh, Wednesday night I go to sleep. I don't get a text or anything. So I'm like, okay, it's not me, but I had this weird gut feeling. I don't know why, but I was like, uh, it's not me. Okay. Next opportunity. I wake up Thursday morning to go to training at 7 AM and I have a text from travel and they're like, Hey, you're needed for SmackDown tomorrow. I'm booking your travel. And I was like, well, that's interesting. So, I text the lead writer um, at NXT and I'm like, hey, like I heard you needed for SmackDown. Do you know what's going on? But he didn't answer yet. So I had Skull, which is where we just go and, you know, watch film. So I go and watch film and I pull my coach aside and I'm like, hey, like I got this text. Like, I don't know if I'm flying out today. I don't know what's going on. He was like, don't stress. They probably just want to like see you in person. Or maybe they're bringing Vaughn up for a dark match or whatever. And then now it's like 10 a.m. So I finally get to meet with um, the lead writer and I'm like, he's like, hey, what's going on? And I'm like, um, I don't know. I heard him needed for SmackDown. And he's like, oh, I haven't checked my email. Let me look. And then he looks and he's like, all right, um, you're Maxine. You're flying out today. My flight was in four hours. <laughs> so then I literally ran home, had to get a spray tan. I'm not going to be pale. Important. Very important. Yes. 
got a spray tan, packed my bag and hit the road and then it took off from there. I think that, you know, I love when I hear stuff like that because so so often people think that the superstars are in the know far ahead yeah. of time of what's going on and like you didn't even know you were debuting until like you know 24 hours before yeah i had no idea but i think that really like did they ever so did they ever tell you you know why you got did you ever get an indication of why you got called up so early in your run there i didn't i think they just um i think i got really lucky and maybe someone saw something special in me that they thought would work well as maxine i'm not sure but i'm just so thankful for the opportunity. I'm sure your fashion background had to play into it to some degree. Yeah, and I, I think too, like it is funny because I didn't really know LA Knight when he was in NXT because uh, I think when he left, I was like just starting training or something. But like in hindsight, I'm like, I guess we could kind of pass as brother and sister. Like there was a couple elements that I was like, I guess it does make sense, but I just wasn't thinking that prior. Yeah, I don't think that you were someone that anybody predicted was going to be in that spot because i remember when that was happening no. and people were like maybe it'll be this person maybe it'll be yeah. that person and then you kind of came completely out of left field yeah no one knew i have i have no idea but i'm thankful i also think that it's a testament to your to your talent when you know in such a short amount of time they have trusted you to be such a big part of that act on tv when you. you know with la night it was clear that you know, his other gimmick was much more suited for what he had been doing. And then they kind of just like yeah. gave you the ball in a very, you know, sh short amount yeah. of time being in the industry. And you really did run with it and show that you were fit to be in that spot. Thank you. I will say, I think with my background, I've always worked well under pressure and worked well under last minute changes. Cause that's, you know, in, in an idea, I was working in sports entertainment with, you know, NFL cheerleading and all that. So I was, used to that like like we would have times with cheer where it's like we get there for game day and they're like oh there's a halftime performer and they want us to perform with them we have to put a routine together so i was used to that pace and i think that helped me so much i think it helps that masse and mans mansua were very much waiting for an opportunity as well like both of them Absolutely. you know are so funny they're so funny and they, are. they really hadn't been given an opportunity to flex that muscle on wwe tv so when they got the opportunity to do it i think all three of you kind of thrive in that situation and you really all yeah. showed up i mean they fully took me under their wing like i did not know what i was doing i was like i'm just showing up and rolling with the punches and hoping for the best and they have both taught me so much and just taking such good care of me. Like they just, I feel like they always like looked out for me and like even for traveling together, like I just feel really, really thankful that my, with my experience, even with LA Knight, like they've just, all of them have really um, put such like a positive insight on my career. And I'm just so thankful for that. I think that Masse too is someone who has similarly had to kind of just dive into the deep end with so many different things, you know, whether it's yeah. being an announcer on Raw or being part of Retribution, now doing this. I mean, he's really been all over the place. And in my opinion, he's always shined in each one of those positions. Yeah, and I think that's why, you know, they've been employed for so long. They're so talented and they really can adapt to anything that they're given. And I think too, like they really go all in with any character anything that's going on, like they dive all in. And I think that's a really, really special trait, especially in this business, to just be comfortable with anything and just roll with the punches. And I think again, like me being paired with them also kind of taught me that like, okay, we don't know what's going on, but we're just, we're gonna get it done and do it to the best of our ability. I gotta say too, the, the series of videos that you guys were in online <laughs> were probably one of my favorite digital WWE things in years. Like, I love that stuff, like the Zack Ryder stuff, VTE, whatever. And and those videos were so entertaining, like so funny. Thank I literally you know. looked forward to each one every week. And that doesn't happen to me often with digital online videos like that. Yeah, that was so much fun to film. Like when I tell you we would be crying, laughing in between takes, like, because we were just like literally just rolling with it. Like we would just see what was funny and see what would stick. And like, I would be on the floor. Like it was hilarious to do, to be doing that entire thing and to be working with them. Like, oh, it was so good. So you guys, were, were you guys even working with a script or anything? Or were you guys just kind of going with it? So every, everything would be approved. Like we had like a kind of a little written out approved situation, but 
No, we were just out there doing it. <laughs> I love that. That's such like a man as someone who loves improv and stuff the, to know that you guys were just going off the cuff with that stuff is even better because some of that stuff was just so funny. Yeah. Like if you have, if you're watching cool. this and you haven't seen it, go find those videos. They they're yeah. so funny. They're so good. And I have to give credit to Manny because Manny literally like his brain, he's so talented the way that he writes and like just his ideas. Like he would come up with these ideas that were just like so wild, but well thought out. And it just, I have so much respect for that. Cause I, sometimes I'm like, wait, so where are we going from here? And he's like, oh, we're going to X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the fact that you guys were able to do like a noir episode, you know, yeah. or there's like, you know, Masse just trying to find his roller rink or whatever, like all that stuff was yes, just, it was just, so good. I love off the wall type stuff like that. So it was very much yeah. in the vein of things that I would watch. Incredible. So do you think that those videos helped you get on the TV more regularly? You know, I'm actually not sure, but I do think the videos helped me develop my character so much because I was just, you know, it's like with anything, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And I think, just that practice and like really diving into who Maxine is and just really digging deep helps develop my character so much. So I think at least that element definitely helped me be on TV more consistently. But I mean, we did get a lot of really positive feedback on the videos for sure. Yeah, cause they stopped and I was bummed, but I was like, well, no. she's on TV now at least. So I guess like I have to kind of like, you know, pick which yeah. one I want more. <laughs> Exactly. Can't get it all. <laughs> uh, you were saying, uh, I was saying I love your chemistry with Alpha Academy right now. Yes, I'm having so much fun working with them. And like, there are another two that have just been so generous and kind to me. And I'm just, I'm just thankful for anyone I get to work with and learn from. And I feel so blessed that I just keep getting paired with such talented people that just give me so much. So I'm really, really grateful for that. And I think the chemistry with them has honestly just been easy. Like it's been, it's felt natural. Obviously Otis is hilarious, you know? And I just like, I don't know, I love playing into it. And kind of going back to that whole momager thing, I feel like I'm get, really getting to lean into that. I think that Chad Gable is such a good straight man to play off of when you're someone who's so expressive like you are, that he's like the yeah. perfect, you know, other side of that, where he can play, he can play outlandish, he can play all, you know, do his thing. But I really do think Absolutely. that he's really good as like the straight man opposite insanity. No, I think so too. And I think we have a great balance. And it's like, even when we do uh, like backstages, it's like really fun. We just kind of like banter off of each other. And I think that we've just really kind of found our groove. So I'm thankful that it's been continuous and you know, something that we get to continue to build on. I also, you know, when I had them on the show, we, we spoke about you a little bit and- Yes, I listened. I was like, oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> That's awesome that you heard. But yeah, they had nothing but praise for you. Like they they had this, you know, such praise for you and your skill. And that's gotta be cool to hear from people who've been in the company for as long as they have, considering, yeah. you know, your short amount of time that you've been there. Oh, you best believe I screen recorded it. I saved it. I was like, oh, this is such a cool moment. You know, it's like, it's so special because I think sometimes you get on like the hamster wheel of work and you're just like going and going. And then you're like not taking time, like you're you're accepting the cool moments, but you're not taking time to really be like, wow, I've I've come far in this in a short amount of time. And that feels really, really special. And I think sometimes I have to like take a step back and be like, okay, I'm doing okay. I'm keeping up, I'm doing okay. I'll continue to get better every week and continue to grow. And that's gonna take time. But it's it's really, really cool to kind of just feel that like praise from people that you really respect. I like that you also said earlier that you write down you know, your, your accomplishments that you've had yeah. over the years, because I think a lot of times it is hard for people who are driven to celebrate those moments or to take it's them hard, in yeah. for real. And so I think that's a cool, I've never heard a lot of people doing that of writing that down. And I think that yeah. probably does help you to kind of like recognize the amount of accomplishments that you've had. Yeah. And some, and some are accomplishments and some are just like, um, like I'll screenshot a text that's like, just really made me feel good when I read it after, you know, after a show where I'm like, oh, that's so special that that person said X, Y, and Z. And so I just think it's, it's really, it's good because it just kind of keeps your, your head on straight when you get lost in the sauce, you know, you get to go back and be like, okay, I, I really accomplished a lot of the things that I want to. And on top of that, it's like, I'm, I'm making good friends along the way. I'm 
getting quality time with really cool people. I'm getting to learn from such respected, talented people in this business. And that's really, really, really special. How long have you been doing that for? So, um, writing down goals. I've yeah, been writing down like right. the accomplishments and stuff and texts and all that kind of so, stuff. I've been doing that, honestly, at our tryout for WB, they suggested it. And I was like, oh, that is right up my alleyway. I will absolutely do that. So that's when I started doing it for WWE. I think over time, I've kept track of some stuff with dance, um, but not as like deliberately. I, I think that's a, that's a good, it's a smart suggestion for WWE to tell people to do that. I was mainly just wondering why, because I know that you've also dealt with like adversity in your life with your brother and stuff and like, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I feel sometimes when I when I hear of someone's brother passing, you know, I unfortunately my brother passed as well, young at a young oh, age. I'm sorry. And thank you, and I'm sorry for yours as well. And like I I do think it kind of like puts us into this like sh the shittiest saddest club ever that exists, yeah. you know. But I do like to hear of people that are able to take something so sad or whatever and still be able to live their life and accomplish things and not let it. Yeah. take everything from them because sometimes it is easy to let that happen yeah i don't know how you feel about this but for me i kind of feel this like overwhelming need to like live life big enough for the both of us because he wasn't blessed with that opportunity to live a longer life and i think it also has really changed my perspective because he passed when i was 20 and i think at that time i was really like i am really driven with work but i think at that time i would like miss out on family things for work or kind of had different priorities. And now it's just so important to me to have quality time. And so it's like, even if that means that I'm skipping a day off because I need to, you know, have quality time with this person before I go to work, those are things that I, I do think in that sense, it's giving me a better perspective on life and just taking things softer, more with a grain of salt because life is so short. And I think when you experience that, it does help your mindset to be like, you know what, this might suck right now, but it's not the end of the world. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that what you said about feeling like you have to live life for two people, I think that everybody who has a sibling that they were close with that passed away feels that way. I know Charlotte Flair, we had a long yeah. talk on here about her brother passing away and it was the exact same thing that she said, that it was like, she took it on for her, but also for her brother and was like, I'm gonna do this for the two of us. And she's gone yeah. to such great you know, heights doing that. And I think yeah. that, um, it does kind of become part of you where you're like, they didn't get to live a full life. So I'm going to make sure that I live an even f yeah. more full life for that reason. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's, uh, I was reading about yours and it's sad. I cried while reading it. Yeah. It was just so sad. Yeah. And you, know? you know, and grief is hard and like grief is unknown and like isolating. And I feel like it's not something that's like spoken about. Like no one prepares you for grief, even though everyone experiences death. And it's kind of that weird thing where it's like, and no one tells you that every single person grieves differently. So you're going to feel isolated and alone because people are healing different than how you're healing. Um, but I think that like when, as you experience that, at least if you have someone else that experiences it, you can kind of share your knowledge on that and be like, you're not alone. I'm with you. And like, if when you, when you've gone through that, it's just like, like you said, it's just like the status club to be in but it does allow you to kind of lend that hand to other people who are then experiencing it. Yeah. I always try to make sure if I see someone talk about a sibling that passed that I say something, cause I think it is so easy to feel alone when you're in a situation like that, like, Oh, yeah. you know, nobody else has gone through this. And then when you realize that so many others have, and they're in the so same place, have. it's, it's nice to have that support system. And I think yeah. that, and you're right. Grief is something that, it's so difficult. You know, I, for the past 10 years, I've been sad about my brother and then my dad just died. And so it's like, oh, I'm so sorry. thank you. And it's like, not to be a downer on this whole thing, but I think that no. I, I yeah. think that like you said, grief can, can hit people in different ways. And I think that for the last 10 years, I was like very sad about my brother. And, and then my dad passing away has kind of awoken something different in me where it's like, okay, like you said, there's only so much time that we have on this earth. I got to wake up and just start doing the things that I want to do and living exactly. Yeah. And it's, it's weird too. Cause like, I won't even like, like it'll be his birthday and I won't cry, but then it'll be a random Tuesday and a song will play and I'll be like bawling. Cause it'll remind me of him. Like, it's just one of those weird things that like is so hard to understand, but, um, love therapy, love growth, <laughs> love healing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I try to, it's, yeah. I get bummed when my, the day my brother passed away, people are sharing stuff 
uh, for him that day. And I'm like, no, that was the worst day to talk about my brother. I <laughs> like, know. Let's talk about it on his birthday or some other cool time in his life. Yeah. Like, I don't want to remember that. Like, God. <laughs> right. I know. It's so hard. <laughs> well, let's move on to something a little more fun here. I'm going to do a non-wrestling topic here. We'll, we, yeah, this is some icebreakers. These are non-wrestling questions. Uh, what's the best purchase that you've made in the last year? Ooh, that's a good one. Okay, this is my best version. <laughs> I have never bought in anything like designer for myself. And me and Chelsea were in Arizona headed to Mania. And I really wanted a Louis Vuitton duffel bag. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to treat myself this one time. And it's gonna I'm going to remember it as like, you know, the bag I got on the way to WrestleMania, my first experience. So I would say that's my best purchase in the past year. I feel like that's a good pre-WrestleMania purchase right there. Yeah. It's gotta feel nice Something that you're that able to do that for- now too. Yeah, I, I was a really like special moment because this is the first time where I could like afford to, to really treat myself with something and I was, I was thankful for that moment. Uh, if you could have dinner with any three living people, who would they be? Ooh, oh my gosh, okay. Wait, let me think. <laughs> this is a tough one. Okay, Nikki Bella, because I would love to sip some vino with her. That would make my whole life. Um, I'm gonna say JLo, because I just love her. I mean, she's iconic. And I'm gonna say Shania Twain, because she was my very first concert when I was six, and I named my cat after her, and I just think that'd be like a really cool person to interact with. That would be a cool dinner right there. J-Lo, Shania yeah, Twain, and Nikki Bella. Just get it all covered I think right there. That's a good dinner. Yes, definitely. Yes. I think you also picked three people who kind of like have been able to be famous in one field, but then also expand outwards too. Yeah. I know. I have a type. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that J-Lo movie yet. I haven't watched it. Mother, is that what it's called? Mother, I haven't seen it yet. I need to watch it. Maybe I'll watch it on my flight this week. Smart, smart. Uh, what's the best era of music? Ooh, okay. I'm going to say like early 2000s. Okay. That fits with your age and stuff. I think everyone. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I was born in 97, so you know. <laughs> oh, man. That makes me feel so old. You were born in 97. Oh, that's crazy. Okay. Uh, sometimes I feel so old and I don't even realize it. Like, I feel so young and hip, and then I hear that and I'm like, I know. crap, I'm old. What are you? You're the old guy you're in the not. room now. No. You're just, you're just getting started. <laughs> So then who who in the 2000s were your people that you were listening to? Um, okay, so like Pink. These okay. are like songs that like my mom was playing in the car. So I think that's why I have like such fond memories. Um, like Gwen Stefani. Um, who else is in that? Even like J-Lo's old songs. Classic, classic. I have such, yeah. a, I have such a vivid memory of the early 2000s. That's when I was in high school. And uh, I remember my I was at wrestling practice and I – Got out of wrestling practice, and my dad used to have a um, a car that had the, the top would come down, and so I remember, I remember like being with all the tough wrestler kids, like waiting for yeah. you know your parents to pick you up, and everyone was acting all tough after we just got out of wrestling practice, and my dad pulled up and with the top down with his friend, just blasting "Get the Party Started" like as uh. loud as possible as he came to put. Rug guy, come on, dude. You know, and I'm like, oh, oh my, my gosh. God, this is so embarrassing. I mean, like, and that my- age, like, that age, you're like, this is the most embarrassing thing you could ever possibly do to me. <laughs> it really was. Um, it's like, it's like ingrained in my brain because I remember yeah. being like, who's bumping? Get the party started. <laughs> and then it was my dad, and he pulls up, like, hey, Rice Pisky, come on. You know, I'm like, uh, oh my God, dad, please don't I do love this. It. <laughs> <laughs> um, you talked about how, uh, you know, your, um, training still you talked about your yeah. injury so you're cleared to wrestle now i am i'm cleared i'm training in ring everything's good we're we're healthy are you antsy to start wrestling more matches yourself you know i am very like i'm just i'm trying to live in the moment so i'm so happy and so content with like my character and the storylines i'm having so much fun i obviously would love to get a little physicality going but I also just want to like really take in every single moment. Like I feel like I'm never going to get this time back. So I'm like, I'm just enjoying it. And when that time comes, I will be so excited. Who are you doing the most training with right now? Norman Smiley. How great is that? I love him. Everyone seems to talk so highly of his training. 
Yes, I love Norman. Um, he's just like such a special human, you know? Like he just, I don't know. I, I love being in his class. He has such a, a positive delivery and he's obviously so talented and knows so much. So it's just, I always am learning something new, which I love. He strikes me as someone who would kind of like share things that you, that you, that would kind of like open up new avenues in your mind. You're like, Oh, I didn't even yeah. think about that. Like, Oh, good yeah. point. Norman Smiley. Absolutely. Yeah. I, uh, are the, who, so is that the main, that's the main person you're training with there? Yeah. 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 Right now. Yes. So I know you're living in the moment, but would you like to start wrestling in singles competition more and be part of the women's division on SmackDown? Oh, of course. Or Raw? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would love to. And I think, like, we have so many talented women, and I just, there's, again, so much opportunity for me to learn from so many of them, and to be in the ring with them would be so special. Um, you know, I, I do get to roll around sometimes with, like, Dana Brooke, or Nikki and like those, it's really, really fun to get to learn from them on Mondays. So I just, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that time. Well, I love it. I normally have a closing segment here where I go through people's finishing moves, but you don't have enough matches <laughs> under your belt yeah. to do that. So next time I get you on the show, I will make sure that we do that. But hopefully, Absolutely. hopefully you get some matches under your belt by the time we get there. Yes, I would love that. Okay, good. Well, I appreciate you giving me the time today very much. It was cool getting to know you here. Thank you so much. This was so fun, and I can't wait till we do it again. Yes, definitely. You have a great day. You too. Peace. Bye. All right, that was my conversation with Maxine Dupree. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Super fun getting to know that person. Now, before we get out of here, I got a little bit of housekeeping to do. Don't turn this off quite yet. Instead, Go follow WWE on Fox on social media if you're not already doing that. We're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on TikTok. We're on all the popular platforms, so make sure you're following WWE on Fox. Also, make sure you're subscribed to the Out of Character podcast feed. That way, if you're watching this on video and you're not near your computer, you can pick it up wherever you are on the go, and you can check it out on your phone instead. So make sure you're subscribed excuse me, subscribed to the Out of Character podcast feed. And also, if you're there and you enjoy the show, if you're listening to it right now on there, do me a favor, hook us up with a five-star review. Let the people know what you think of this show. It helps out a lot. And it really helps my ego because I read all of them. Also, make sure that you are subscribed to the WWE on Fox YouTube channel. That's where you can find this video, this show on video every week, as well as clips from Ron SmackDown, and much more. All right, that's it. I'm done. Officially tapping out for now. Until next time, I'm Ryan Satin, and this has been Out of Character.